Oh man, look at how shiny we are, guys. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Runic SMP. As I promised in the last video, I have spent the last little while enchanting all of my gear and my weapons and everything, and I'd say I got pretty good stuff. I've got fully decked out armor with mending, depth strider, feather falling, all that kind of good stuff. Don't have a helmet yet, still gotta sort that out before the dragon fight. But our tools are looking pretty good, except for the sword, we're not going to talk about that. Bow's looking pretty good. Then our shovel, our pickaxe, and our axe have everything we need. And uh, uh, yeah, that was a level 30 enchantment. Not ideal. But we are looking pretty good in terms of gear. So I have been collecting some resources for a project we are going to start today. But first things first, we need to repair our pickaxe. It's seen better days. Sadly, our best form of XP right now is to trade potatoes and carrots with these villagers and they're not zombified or anything like that so it's it's slow going but it's something it'll at least keep us tied over until we can go to the end but thankfully teak has been hard at work working on villager stuff at spawn here we have all of these librarians with books and yes that's how i got most of my enchanted gear here because the luck i was having last week's episode yeah that that kind of persisted all through the enchanting process so i gave up and bought books in fact, Teak has been pretty busy at spawn here. He's made this uh, villager trading hall here, the villager breeder. He transformed this random mangrove area <laughs> we have here into our new spawn location. We actually moved the spawn area to this campfire here, so we have a new spawn place for the server. And then, of course, the enchanting station and the community mine that goes all the way down to bedrock and it's all made out of mud brick. People have been busy around spawn and I haven't really done much to contribute so we're changing that today. As you all know in 1.19 the birch forests were supposed to be updated and they were going to be beautiful and glorious and also cut from the initial launch of the game. So we still have these boring birch forests over here. They look alright, but they could be better. That's what we're working on today. This spawn area is cool, but it lacks order, and we're going to bring that to the spawn area today by transforming this entire area into a customized birch forest. What we were promised in this update. And also, just to be clear, I'm not salty about it not being in the update, I'm just kind of bummed out. But from what I understand, it'll probably be in the next one. They just need more time to actually flush out the update. But I think we need a little bit of a bird's eye view of spawn to get an idea of what we're working with. Alright, so this is our spawn area right now. It's looking cool, but a little chaotic, and I think we can fix that. And just to be clear, I don't expect to completely finish this today, but we'll get as far as we can. What I think we'll aim for today is to get a good portion of this area here turned into a birch forest, and then we can do this area and this area over here, just kind of throughout the week uh, off camera, I think. But I want to at least give you a sample of what things are going to look like when they're done. But first things first, we need to clean this area up a little bit so that we can get a better idea of the space we're working with. What we're going to do is we're going to remove all the trees that are over here, probably up to kind of my property line over there. So sort of from my place to Dixie's place over there, all those trees will be removed. We're probably going to get rid of a good portion of these fields here too and maybe some over there. Community farm is gonna stay and the mangrove area is gonna stay because this is a really cool area. So we'll basically have a mangrove swamp in the middle of our birch forest. We might make this a little swampier too, so replace some of this with mud blocks, get some water in here, all that kind of good stuff. But I think it's time for a quick time lapse. This is really trippy. All right, well, replay mods out, so let's go. There we go, and just like that, we've got a big area cleared out here so that we have lots of space to work. We've also cleared out all of the trees and stuff in and around all these houses, took out all the tall grass and all the flowers, smoothed out the terrain. Hi, Creeper. Maybe we don't want to tango with you. But yeah, long story short, we got lots of space to work with. So we've got a few things that we need to do before we can start planning out our forest here, and we've got to move a few things around and plan a few things out. Primarily, the cow and sheep pen over here um, it's, it's a little cramped over here, and I think we gotta make something a little better looking. On top of that, we've had these kind of janky paths since day one, and they look better in some places than others, but when you start to get to the area of town where we first started, it starts to look very square, and it, it looks a little 
odd in my opinion. So I think we're going to naturalize these paths a little bit as well as switch out the material and add a little bit of variation to them. That way they just look nice for our forest. But you remember earlier when I said I had been collecting a bunch of resources for this project? I was not kidding. I spent ages chopping trees and harvesting the leaves and everything, gathering all the materials I think that we're going to need for this particular transformation. And the stuff we're going to start with is the rooted dirt as well as all the stuff to make coarse dirt. I didn't exactly collect enough dirt because I thought I would need a lot less to fix the terrain around, but uh, you know, we can always go grab more if we need it. I think this is more or less the style we're going to go with for the path using rooted dirt and coarse dirt, and then we're going to have a few path blocks mixed in as well. So for example, we may want to bring that in a little bit out here and then just have this fan out a little bit over here. Like I said, we're going to naturalize the path a little bit more, a lot less straight lines, and we're also going to integrate some fences and stuff into the side too, just to kind of frame it out a little bit and give it a more uh, finished and polished look. So I'm going to get to work on that. I'm also going to brainstorm what I want to do for the cow and sheep pen, because I think what I want to do is I want to have two separate pens, one maybe over here and one over here and have new paths leading to them. That way they're within the birch forest. And I might have a few other areas of interest within the forest as well. But I got my work cut out for me here, so I'm going to get to work. Let's roll another time lapse. We are making some pretty good progress here. I've replaced all the paths with the coarse and rooted dirt, and I've switched all the slabs from oak to spruce so that they blend in a bit better. And things are looking pretty good. We have a lot more shape and curve to the paths now, as well as they're a little thicker too, so they're easier to walk on. There are a few that I've missed, like the ones going to Telvi's house, as well as up by Dixie's house I haven't gotten yet. And I think there was one other one that I missed somewhere too. Ah, right, the one going to my house, how could I forget? But I've also added in a completely new path over here, heading to the new sheep and cow pens, which are over here. They're going to be in the middle of the birch forest here, so they're going to be under tree cover. It's going to look pretty cool once we're all said and done. And for over here, I do have something a little special planned but we'll go over that in a minute. And by in a minute, I mean closer to the end of the episode because we're gonna move on to the next phase here, which is actually the forest itself. So what I wanna do first is I grabbed about 10 stacks of birch logs, and I just wanna start planning out where the different trees are gonna go. That way I can plan out how thick they're going to be and how dense they're going to be in certain areas. So placing down some just little places for trunks in places, and then I can kind of fill the trunks out a little bit and decide how big I want the trees to be. But I'm gonna place these down and make some trunks and I'll be right back. I have placed over 128 different tree trunks here and I have not even touched the other side of the mangrove over there by the villager breeder. And of course it starts raining again. But I have trees scattered throughout the entire town here and I think it's gonna look pretty cool. And as promised, I do have one tree trunk built. It looks a little wonky without the leaves, but I think the way I wanna do it is I wanna build all the trunks first, that way I can figure out the density of the forest, and then I'll go in and add the foliage after. But to give you an idea of what they're going to look like when they're done, here are a few sample trees that I've built in my creative world here. I'm also going to have some fallen trees like in the update pictures as well. But this is kind of what the birch trees are going to look like when they're done. Birch trees usually don't have a whole lot of leaves on them from the pictures that I've seen and also the trees that I've seen in real life because uh, I got a lot around me. But yeah, these are some sample trees and it gives me an idea of what I'm going for. I'm going to have lots of bee nests around. I'm going to hopefully have a bunch of bees buzzing around. I've got some spore blossoms hidden in some of the trees. That way we get these particle effects going around. It's going to be a very atmospheric forest because we're going to have streams. We're going to have a bunch of rocks, moss, drip leaves, flowers, everything going throughout it. And I really like this idea right here with the dead coral on the side because it just gives kind of like the mossy look because there's a bunch of different types of moss that you'll find in the wild. And between the dead coral and the glow lichen, I think that emulates it really well in Minecraft. But like I said, I've got over 100 trees to build, so I guess there's no point in wasting any more time. Let's do it.
and then my game crashed and I lost the rest of the replay footage. You don't log on for one day. One day, and some unlicensed idiot drives into your tree. <laughs> uh, this is actually pretty funny though, and I, I love the decapitated villager inside the car. I, I'd like to point out my tree didn't do that, the windshield is still intact. Um, <laughs> but uh, I guess we have our first fallen tree in the forest. Uh, speaking of which, I've currently just got a bunch of dead trees because I just put up the tree trunks. I'm going to do the leaves next, but I wanted to just kind of put them up and get an idea for the density of the forest as I'm going. Um, because the leaves aren't going to take up too much space. So right, the spider's under here. I terraformed this area. Speaking of terraforming, um, yeah, I, uh, I made a cliff because I want to have a waterfall coming off here, leading into a little river and, uh, creek that go throughout the forest here as well. Also, this was a good way to link up my base with the rest of the island. So terraforming equals good. It also equals incomplete, but that's an issue for another time. For the time being, I've got a lot of trees that need leaves. I'm going to get the leaves on these ones and then I'll see about making some more, uh, depending on the time I got. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do one and show you what it's going to look like at the end. And there we go. We got our first tree completed with the leaves. It's still looking a little wonky, but I think that's because it's just one tree out of all of them. Uh, the rest are just dead right now. So I think once I start getting leaves on the other trees, this one will start to look a bit more in place. But it did take me a while to get it to a point where I was happy with it because you do kind of have to look at this tree from every angle and make sure that it doesn't look wonky from like the north or the south or whatever. So I've been walking around the tree making sure that it's all looking good and I think it's finally to a point where I am happy with it. Um, so I'm going to go through and do this for all the trees. It did take me quite a while to do this, so I might do a montage or just a jump cut because I don't think I'm going to do another time lapse for the leaves since they take so long to do. Also, um, I have Swift Sneak 3 now. Teak sold me a book, so I'm sneaking around really fast, which is really jarring when you're, uh, you know, dirt pillaring and everything because check this out. When you pillar up and then you start moving this way on the dirt pillars you just go way faster than you're used to and I thought I was lagging at first or something but nope that's the swift sneak anyways interesting fact for the day done and over with let's place leaves oh uh, yeah it's all coming together we have the leaves on the trees that have already been made and it's starting to look pretty good in here and we don't even have any ground cover yet so the next step is going to be that ground cover that I was just talking about we're gonna do up this little area here in a video and probably this area over here and then I'll do the rest mostly off camera and maybe even on stream I might try and do a little stream just to test the quality but uh, that's yet to be determined anyways before we start the ground cover there are a few blocks we need to collect here we need these guys right here the flowering azalea leaves also a few azalea leaves are nice to have too they're really good for color there we go, now that we got a bunch of flowering azalea leaves, these make really nice bushes in our forest here, so we can just kind of spread some of these around to add a little splash of color to the area. Also, I would love to start integrating some moss into the area too. Uh, hopefully that didn't eat too much of my path, but I think replacing a bunch of this grass with moss will help to add to the effect of the forest as well. We're still going to leave some grass in here, but I think a majority of it is going to end up as moss in the end. And also growing the moss is helping us get some smaller trees in the area too. These little azalea guys are awesome because they don't grow up on their own without bone meal. So having a few of those around the area just make it feel like there's a few ungrown trees in the area. And speaking of smaller trees, I think it would be cool to have a few smaller birch trees in the area too. So I think where that azalea was is actually the perfect spot for one. Actually, maybe, maybe a couple blocks over, maybe like right there. But yeah, just having a few smaller trees like that in the area I think will really help fill out the space. Speaking of filling the area, there's another feature that I wanted to bring into this forest that was actually teased in the 1.19 update, and those are fallen birch logs. Uh, this is a little botched right now, let me fix it up. There we go, little features like that, and then we can cover the top, or at least some of the top in moss to make it look like it's been here a while. We can also have the moss like creeping up the side almost by having moss blocks coming up a bit. And we could even have the bushes growing over the stump a little bit too. Kind of like so. And that brings a lot of color into the area, I think. One thing really does keep leading into the next. Speaking of color, flowers. Flowers are always a good idea. And I think 
just some large patches of flowers here and there are going to really help complement this area. The other thing that I really want to do is hide some of these spore blossoms in the trees here. So if I just get on top up here, maybe punch out this leaf here, and ah, oh, it has to be on a block. Okay, we'll go up a little bit higher and just throw it on the bottom of this guy. I can't talk. I was gonna say maybe, but it came out as meh. But by doing that, we get this awesome atmospheric effect with the green dots going everywhere. And I want to have that going through this entire forest because atmosphere really does make a build like this when you're working on biomes and terraforming and everything like that. So we're going to do a bunch of this throughout the biome, I think. And then, of course, we need some stones or boulders in the area. Working with some mossy cobblestone, some tough cobblestone, all that kind of stuff. We'll get some slabs in here, too, because we don't want it to be super blocky. But just having some small boulders in the area I think will really add to the look as well. But yeah, having some boulders like that are really going to add the color we need to this area. We started it with the cow and the sheep pens here, but we need to continue it throughout the biome as well. This is looking a little rough on this side. Let's add a few more little bits and bobs over here. That should be good. I might have to refine this a little bit. I think we're going to replace this with a stair, but I got to make some. There we go. I have fixed up that rock as well as, you know, the rest of the forest. Let's do a quick run through of the forest as it stands right now. We've got ourselves a nice little pond here. This is the only little bit of water that I've introduced so far, but I do plan on having a creek and a river running through here as well. We've got lots of these fallen birch trees overgrown by the moss and the azalea bushes, lots of flower patches and everything, and we have the spore blossoms in the trees for that really cool effect in the sky here. It looks like there's just like pollen flying around everywhere and I think that adds great atmosphere to this forest. Speaking of atmosphere, bringing the bees in here has done a lot too. There's actually pieces moving around now, so it's not just all static in here. And I think it does bring a lot of life to the forest with that and our sheep and that's not a sheep. Pretty sure that's squished. I'll let it uh, sit there for a while. But yeah, I've done up a good chunk of the forest that is already built here, all the way back to here. Now I haven't started in this area over here, and sadly I don't think I have time to do it in this episode either, but I'll probably work on it a little bit between episodes, and we'll maybe work on that in our next episode as well. Well, actually not the next episode, because I have something very special planned for our next episode. And I'm going to leave it as a little bit of a surprise for you guys, but I would definitely make sure you subscribe, that way you can see the next one. I'll give you a little hint here. You won't see it coming. But yeah, I'm extremely happy with how everything has turned out here, and I don't think we'll continue working on the Birch Forest today. This has taken a lot of effort to get to where it is right now, and I'm looking forward to you all seeing it. And yes, this area is very plain right now, but I will fix it, don't worry. Anyways, I think the next thing we need to work on in this area, other than of course the birch trees, is our starter house. I think we need to start wrapping this up, get the pathway connected to this island here I'm thinking. I think we'll do a curve from there over to here and connect the bridge up at this point here, and then extend the path from here over to here and have our house connect to the rest of the village through this birch forest. Also looking through here, I'm guessing you can uh, kind of guess the other thing I need to do here. Yep, there's still no back. If I drop down here, it is a very steep drop off and the terraforming still needs to bro be brought from over there to connect up to what will soon be our balcony at the back here as well as the back of the island here. That way it's not just a steep drop off and we have a gradual decline from the balcony to our island. I'm undecided if I'm gonna leave this piece of the river here. It's gonna cut off over there obviously because we can't just have it going under the island and uh, cutting off there. <laughs> um, I'm also gonna blend that cliff into the water as well that way it does look like the river cuts off over there. And by over there I of course mean right here. But yeah I think that's a good next step. Well, I'd say that's a solid bit of progress. Oh, that's a creeper right there. And you gotta admire that great new view we have from the porch of our house. Look at it. It's beautiful. And it'll only continue to get more and more beautiful as we work on it. But I do think that is about all the time we have for today's episode. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making this, and this is truly what I envisioned for 119 when they announced the Birch Forests. We'll see if they pull through in the next update and actually add them, and we'll see how my forest compares to what they implement. But like I said, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one for a very special episode. Goodbye!